what is going on guys welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be taking a look at the hashable protocol and respectively the equatable protocol so here we are on the apple developer website just looked up hashable and you can see the definition is a type that can be hashed into a hasher to produce an integer hash value now i don't know about you guys but that's pretty meaningless to me unless i see an example Hashable is super popular, used all over the place. So I figured it's probably about time that we started talking about this. So that said, make sure you destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm as always. Really destroy it. Let's see if Google has to go back and fix that button. Hit subscribe while you're at it, while you're down there in the button section. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to get started by opening up Xcode and creating a playground here. We can stick with the blank template and we can go ahead and leave the name as the default as well. It'll just overwrite the previous one that I went ahead and created uh, earlier today. Let me go ahead and move this window to be centered and let's expand this guy to give ourselves a little more room to work like so. So cool, first things first, let's get rid of the string and we're gonna put our own string here. We'll say string one, let's make this hello. And let's say string two and make this hello as well. So now obviously something you can do is if string one, string one equals string two, we can like print something out. Have you ever taken some time to step back and wonder, how does this work, right? In a lot of these programming languages, we compare things all the time. If something is equal, if something is not equal, but how, how on earth does a compiler know if this equals this, right? So what Swift is doing actually under the hood is it's leveraging the equatable protocol. And we're going to learn about that. That's going to be the first thing we touch on, equatable, and then we'll dive into how it is related to hashable and how those two things really work hand in hand. So this, the standard library has equatable uh, tacked on to most of the standard types. Now, obviously, these are both strings, so they support equatability. And that equatability allows the compiler to know that uh, in what sense, uh, rather, what criteria is it using to compare if this equals this, right? One thing is number of characters, one thing is the characters itself. Now this is case, uh, case sensitive, so now this does not equal. So uh, sometimes you'll see people lower casing stuff, so on and so forth. So let's say we created our own uh, class and we wanted to check if it was equal, right? So let's say we created a class, uh, we're gonna rather use a struct. And let's say we have a struct and it's called car. Let's say it takes a make and a model and let's say we create a BMW, which will be a car. Make is obviously a BMW. And the model will be a 5 Series. And let's say we create a, uh, I don't know, a Mercedes, so a Benz. And we're going to say the make. I'm just going to be lazy and do M Benz. And the model, let's say this is a uh, E class. Now let's say we want to check if these two things are uh, equivalent, right? If we do if BMW equals Benz, print same, else, print different. Let me fix that else in a second. You're gonna see we're gonna get an error in a quick second here. So if I try to run the console, rather run the playground, you'll see the first thing that we see here is binary operator equal equal cannot be applied to uh, to two car operands. This is a fancy way that it's basically complaining and saying, hey, I don't know how to compare this thing and this thing. And they're both of type car. Help me figure out how to compare it. So in this case, it's pretty easy. All we can do or need to do is add the equatable protocol 
to our struct. And you see that this uh, error goes away now. And if we run it, we'll see that they're different, obviously, right? Now let's go ahead and change these to be the same. And let's run it one more time. And it should say they're the same. Okay, so what's going on here? How, how come when we add equatable, it magically starts to work? Well, the first thing you need to understand is the compiler is smart enough to know that this car struct is simply wrapping two string types. So what it's essentially doing is once you make this car equatable, it looks inside of the struct and it says, okay, well, I know how to compare strings. So I'm gonna say if both of the strings in a car are equivalent to both of the strings in another car, they'll be equal, right? So like if we make this BMW and we leave E class, you'll see that it should say that they're different because they in indeed are different, right? Both strings don't match up. So this is a pretty simple example where uh, the compiler and standard library is doing stuff for us, right? Now, what if we add another type on here and we call this type owner, rather another property on here, and it's gonna be a custom property we're gonna make. We're gonna create a struct called person and they're gonna have a name. Now, person is not equatable. You'll see an error pop up here in a quick minute. There it goes. Uh, the first thing it's complaining about is we need to pass in a owner. So let's do that here. And we'll say Joe owns the Beamer. And who owns the Mercedes? How about I own the Mercedes? That sounds about right. So those errors are gone. But you see we have an error here. And it's saying that car does not conform to uh, the protocol equatable. So similar to any protocol, when you get this error, you can hit this and hit fix, and it should stub out basically what it needs. And if you look at this, this is a weird looking function. The function name is equal equal. Where have we seen that before? So this is actually what brings me back to the very first thing that I said, when you have two strings and you say to string one equal equal string two, the equal equal operator is nothing more than a function that it's using to make a comparison. Now in this case, we have two parameters in this function too. LHS, RHS. These stand for left-hand side and right-hand side. So what it's basically saying is, hey, I don't know how to figure out how to compare these things on my own. Can you implement this function and tell me? So wherever someone uses equal equal with two car types, it's able to do it. So we're going to implement this. So we're going to say uh, return if the left-hand side dot make equals, whoops, we want make to start off the right hand side dot make and left hand side left hand side dot model equals rhs dot model but then we have this person thing right uh, owner but owner does not equate to equatable the simple solution would be just to make this equatable and everything would magically work but i purposely didn't do that so we can show how uh, how to implement this function but let's say we also want to account for the person we can also say and LHS dot owner dot name equals equals right hand side dot owner dot name. And now what you'll see is we don't have any errors about this not conforming to equatable. Let's put that down there. And we can indeed now try to compare these two. And let me uh, let me use the same string values in here, and our person is different. Uh, don't mind the various property names being kind of misleading now, they're both beamers. But go ahead and hit uh, run, and you'll see that they're still different, right? And they should be, because in our equal equal implementation here for equatable, we're taking into account the uh, name of the owner, and it takes into the account that name in a case sensitive way. So let's say I make this one the same name, but it's case sensitive. One has an uppercase and one doesn't. If I'm not mistaken, it'll still say it's still different because it is. Now, what if we say we lowercase both of those strings for the name and we try this one more time, you'll see that they, you should see that they're now the same. So you see they're now the same. So the example that I want to kind of drill home uh, is Equatable is kind of the magic glue that's doing this equal equal for you. And in the cases where Equatable can't handle it for you, you are more than welcome to conform to it directly and you're encouraged to uh, if you need to be comparing two objects that are complex objects. Now you can imagine, obviously, this is pretty common. So 
let's say in the Facebook app, Facebook wants to compare if two posts are the same, right? Uh, a post, let's say that was sent in to be deleted to like some function and a source post, they would need to make the post be equatable or they can uh, try to compare the instances, things like that. But equatable is pretty darn important is my point. So let's do one more thing. Let's talk about hashable now, which is kind of how this video started, but both of these, these things are pretty related. So let's say we have an app where, let's, let's just keep it the Facebook example. Let's say we have a struct that represents a user account. And let's say we have a struct that represents a post. And let's just have um, text on here. Let's say the user account has a account identifier, we'll call it a string, and it has a collection of posts, right? An array of post objects. Now, what a, a structure that would be nice to hold, let's say multiple people and posts would be a dictionary, right? So like a dictionary, a quick refresher. Let's say we have a dictionary and the keys are strings and the value uh, is a string as well. This is a pretty standard dictionary. In the case that we want, we want the key to be the account and we want it to, po uh, to point to a collection of posts. So let me actually get rid of this property. So what we really wanna achieve is we want something like this. We want the key to be a, what did I call it? User account, right? We want the key to be a user account type and we want this to point to a collection of posts. So go ahead and do that and see what happens. So, okay, we've got an error. So let's see what this is saying. It's saying generic struct dictionary requires that user account conform to hashable. Type user account does not conform to protocol hashable. So what the heck is hashable? So a dictionary, for those of you that are kind of from a CS background, or maybe even if you're not, a dictionary, the unique aspect of it is the reason you can get any value out in an O of one time complexity, uh, space time complexity, is because everything has a hash value. So a hash value for the key that is pointing to the value needs to be unique, right? The, the compiler and the language needs to be able to figure out how to differentiate between one user account and another. So in other words, like let's say we had, let's say this actually was working. And uh, let me actually make this look nicer. Get rid of that, let's get rid of that. Let's put a user account in here. Uh, we'll say the first identifier is this, and this points to an array of posts. And we'll just throw one post in here for now because I'm being lazy. And let's just say first, the compiler needs to know how to disambiguate and how to figure out which user account is unique, right? Like if I say uh, from this dictionary, give me all the posts for this user, Right, it, it needs to know how to figure out, well, how do I get a unique hash to get to this position in the dictionary? And that's where Hashable comes in. And it sounds a lot more complicated than it is, but all we need to really do is conform up here to Hashable. Whoops, that's not what we want, to Hashable. And once we conform to Hashable, this will start yelling at us. Give it two seconds, well actually it won't. So similar to Equatable, Hashable basically uses the types that are wrapped inside of whatever you're making Hashable and it knows how to get a unique hash value for a string. So it's able to do that in this case, and it doesn't complain. And similar to equatable, if we create another struct, let's say we make a person once more. Let's see, this is a user account. Let's make it, uh, yeah, let's make a person. Why not? Let's stick with the same example. And let's say we put a name in here. Now this one is not hashable. You'll see that it'll start complaining uh, in a second. Actually, if we make this guy a person as well, it'll start complaining because this thing is not hashable or equatable. Give it a second. There it goes. So it starts complaining that you're not conforming to hashable here. And if we hit this error and click this fix, you'll see that it actually put in this equal equal. But that's weird. This is an equatable thing. So the point of me talking about both equatable and hashable in one video is they go hand in hand. If the, if the language can figure out if two things are equal, it can figure out how to kind of do the opposite, right? If one thing is uh, unique. So similarly, there's an inverse function to this, which it's not, not putting in for us. Uh, and that is hash into hasher. Uh, now what the heck is this? We can basically use this to get a 
we can also bring an equatable actually. We can use this. Why did it just stub it out twice for us? Okay, let's move this up here. We can use this to basically create a unique hash value from the types that are on this class. So we can say hasher combine, uh, what do we call it? Account identifier dot name. And I think we can get away with getting rid of the equal equal. Let's see. Let's see if it complains at us. So yeah, I guess we do need it. So this will basically generate a hash integer, a unique, and if you don't know what a hash is, I keep saying it, it's basically just a unique uh, integer representation of some type. And the equatable thing, we do the same thing that we did in the beginning of this video. We say left-hand side, uh, we call it the account identifier dot name equals right-hand side, account identifier dot name. And now we're able to, let's see, give this a second. Can I convert value? Because this should be a person now. Let's make this guy, whoops. This loves to pop up in all my videos. Let's make this one a person as well. And you'll see that the errors should now go away. Assuming I typed everything correctly, user account, this is a person. I think we have an extra parenthesis there. Now this won't complain. And in this case, it wants us to also pass in a person. So let's pass one of the ones up top there. Let's say we want, uh, let's make this a letter so it's consistent. Let's say we want A. And we're gonna print out in a second. So this should return a collection of posts. So if I print out posts and I spell it correctly, we should see the second post printed out here. So let me expand this and go ahead and pause this, clear and hit run. And what we should see is it's an optional post where we get first out. So let's see what we expected. So we have first in here, and this one was for A, and we were trying to get the thing for A, which makes sense. The reason it's optional is because we're trying to randomly access something from a dictionary. So it may or may not exist, right? It's not an array. So we could do something along the lines of, something like that, it won't be, uh, it won't be uh, optional anymore. And let's go ahead and change this to be B. And we should get the second thing out. So let me go ahead and pause this, clear with the command K, go ahead and hit run. And now we get uh, the second post out. So uh, that was quite a bit longer video than I anticipated this to be, but sometimes hashable and equatable get a little convoluted. So they're very hand in hand. They basically are the underpinnings of how you compare two things. And Apple uses them uh, themselves actually uh, quite a bit in their own code and standard library. So pretty common, you'll see across code bases, pretty useful. Uh, if you tried to put something in a dictionary as a key before it got that error that we saw earlier, now you know why. So that said, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you haven't smashed that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button uh, again. I'm going to keep saying it until everyone smashes the like button. Throw a comment down below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.